Hello and thanks for watching another Stephen Mendes video. In this video we are investigating parallel RLC circuits with initial conditions and once again we are looking for transient responses. So we have the parallel circuit here and we have an initial current in the coil and we have an initial voltage on the capacitor and we are heading in the direction of zero since this is an undriven circuit. So the first thing we're going to do in solving this, we say that at t equals zero, the voltage is so much, the current is so much, and the circuit is um, uh, un discharging towards dead. So we first write a KCL equation at the top node. So these are currents. These three terms that you see here are currents. That's the current through the resistor. This here is the current through the coil. This here is our initial current, I-O. We have to add it in. And this here is the current into the capacitor. So it's a similar idea to the KVL, but now we're dealing with currents, which is why the expressions are reversed. So what's the next thing that we do? Well, the next thing that we do is differentiate the equation to get rid of the integral and turn it into a second order differential equation. Now we can look quite there at that and see that we've just used a little algebra because we had to de divide out the quarter term. So we actually had to do, we had to divide the other things by a quarter, which you see there on the DVDT. We had to divide that quarter to get this to have unity in the uh, second derivative. So you can easily do that. It's simple mass. And we write our characteristic equation again and uh, solve it using our quadratic formula. And lo and behold, this one comes out as two real numbers, two separate and distinct real roots. Our real roots are minus 1 and minus 3. And when we have real roots, that means that our circuit is overdamped. And the solution for the overdamped circuit is just two exponentials added together as shown. We have no cos and sine terms in a situation where we have an overdamp circuit. So we just plug our two S1 and S2 into our exponentials and we still have to find our A1 and our A2. And these are going to depend on our initial conditions as well. So the next stage is to realize that one of our initial conditions is that V is 2 volts at T equal to 0. So that makes it easy, as you can see, because you look at our solution, we set V to 2, and then what do we have? At T equals 0, the exponents disappear, and we have A1 plus A2 must equal 2. And we're going to see that in a minute. We want to rearrange our initial KCL equation to make dV dt the subject. So we just do a little fancy algebra. And we explain to you that we can ignore the integral because at t equals 0, the integral has not yet started to build up. So that term will be zero, and we only need to consider V over R, I, O, and a quarter dV. So we move the V over R and the I, O over to the other side, <coughs> and we divide by the quarter, and we end up with the subject as we want it, 
so that we have dv over dt equal to 4. So now we have v equals 2 and dv dt equals 4. We can, we can undertake a serious solution. So we have vo is 2 and vo uh, derivative is 4 and we have our v. So it remains for us to differentiate our solution so that we have an expression for our solution that begins with dv dt. And this is easy to do because when we differentiate exponentials, all we do is um, bring the, the exponential uh, power down to the front, as you see there. It's very, very easy to differentiate exponentials. So now, we know that dv dt is equal to 4, and we know at t equals 0, the exponentials are going to disappear. So what we end up with is two equations, two equations, a1 plus a2 is equal to 2, and we end up with 4 equals minus a1 minus 3a2. And we rearrange that so that the subject of that is a1, and we plug it into the other equation, plug it into the other equation, you know how to put one equation into another. You've been solving that when you had two simultaneous equations since uh, secondary school. Uh, you know how to do that, a linear equation. So we end up where we solve that and we find a2, which is minus 3. And then we plug it back into the original expression above and we find a1. So we have two equations, two unknowns, a1 and a2, and we solve them for 5 and minus 3, and then we're in a position to write our final answer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.